Welcome to Man360. I'm your host, Brian. Today we're focusing on men's health. We have two incredible interviews that you do not want to miss. John Tesh and CTN Christian Fitness host, Robert Evans. We'll also be discussing taking care of our bodies with nutrition. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Man360. In this first segment, I had the privilege of sitting down with pianist, composer, radio host, and television presenter, John Tesh. We had a very candid conversation about his journey with prostate cancer. John touched on some very important truths that are helpful when dealing with illness. Here's my interview with John Tesh. So John, thank you for being here on Man360, and I really appreciate you spending some time with us. I know I really want to talk about your cancer journey mm -hmm. and kind of what you feel like, you know, God taught you through that and just to share some of the positive, maybe negative things that you kind of dealt with emotionally and mentally. And can you just share a little bit about that? Well, I mean, back in 2015, I had a rant, uh, a rant well, uh, I, I had non-PSA producing uh, prostate cancer, which means that the, the PSA test, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it showed nothing. I had like a 0.4 wow. PSA, which is incredibly low, like for five years. Mm -hmm. But my GP did the manual exam, the digital exam. He said, wow, there's something here. And I said, what? And something here turned into sonograms, a biopsy, and, wow. and then stage three cancer within about two or three weeks. Wow. And I went in for a radical prostatectomy. And this is the ultimate, this is the one thing I would, I would think that, that men probably fear most mm -hmm. because it's, I, I, I like to say, it's in the engine room, right? <laughs> right? And, right. <laughs> and so you're just doing research like crazy yeah. and, and what's gonna happen. And then they wanna do androgen deprivation therapy, which takes all the testosterone out of your body. What's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna lose a lot of weight and then chemo, well, you're gonna lose all your hair. So it's like all this stuff that we men fear yeah. the most. So, you know, potency, you know, our hair, our, our, our body size, you know, it's, it's all there. And so yeah. the real key for me was my wife, you know, and I, we do have friends who, uh, who, have, uh, who have gone through prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, the relationship didn't survive yeah. because so many psychological factors are, are in place. Yeah. 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 I think even for the doctor visits too, for guys anyways, it's like, I'm fine. We're good. And then it's like a double whammy when it's the, <laughs> yeah. everything else about yeah, your manhood yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, and the one thing I have to say too is, is I think a lot of men, my friends, a lot of them, they don't want to go and get a test. And so it's, you know, the women, well, the women in our lives, a lot of times they pick our church. Right. I'm not sure if your wife, right. wife did that. <laughs> uh, and they, they pick our doctor and then they push us into the doctor. Right. But single men in particular, a lot, a, a lot of men, according to my GP, yeah. um, they, they just don't want to go because they don't want to know, you know. And that, right. was, and that was me. Yeah. But, um, boy, my wife just jumped in there. My wife, Connie Selica, just jumped in and yeah. she... She understood that I, that I was going to feel uh, less masculine during this process. Yeah. So, so in that process, you mentioned Connie and also the kids. How do you feel like those relationships were maybe increased and helped or yeah, hurt yeah, through that? Yeah, I know there's yeah. all that kind of those yeah. gyrations yeah. and kind of yeah. waves of life. Yes. And so kind of talk yeah. a little bit about that as well. First of all, I felt guilty because mm. I was taking their time away from mm. them. So my daughter, 24, my, my, my son, 37, and at the time he had two, two grandkids, yeah. and my wife who has a career, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I felt, and I was sick all the time. Yeah. And so I, I just felt so guilty. And then they were mad at me because I was feeling guilty. Right. But, they, but they, <laughs> right. we have a really tight-knit family, and they, yeah. they, they banded together. That's awesome. And then we found this, during the process, we had faith for the doctors, but mm -hmm. during it all, we found a different way to pray. Uh, a friend of ours, Cha Cha Sandoval, handed mm -hmm. us a CD of Andrew Womack's that was a better way to pray. And all yeah. of a sudden we're like, whoa, because we all grew up in the church. Right. And and I landed on, uh, we landed on Mark 11, 23, yep. which, is, which is, by the way, tattooed on all of our, our, yeah. bo our bodies. That's awesome. As a reminder. And it was about speaking to your mountain. And so when the cancer kept coming back, because my, my cancer metastasized, it was either... 
I, I, you know what? If I have just a second, yeah, men please. will appreciate this. Yep. I was in a, uh, a radiation oncologist's office with Connie and my son Gib, and it was okay. The cancer has come back, and this guy says we're going to have to base, basically carpet bomb your pelvis. They wanted to do fifty-seven treatments. You may wow. lose bowel function. You'll probably use, uh, lose sexual function. Wow. And uh, and I looked at Connie, and there's a scene in the three hundred where all, all men remember this, if you've seen The Gladiator at 300, <laughs> where Leonidas the king looks at his, he, the uh, Persian messenger has come and, mm -hmm. and wants to basically, uh, you know, take their freedom away from them, right? And he's standing in front of the Persian messenger, and Le Leonidas is trying to decide what he's going to do. Right. And so he looks back at his, at, his, at his queen, right? And they both, there's just like a flash of the eyebrow and just a raise, like just a, a, <laughs> in, almost imperceptible. Right. He turns and kicks the Persian messenger like into the, into the well, and there it is, this, the Spartans versus right. the Persians. Right. And that was the look that Connie and I shared. And she mm -hmm. knew at that moment that I was done. Yeah. And that, uh, that I was burning my ships, yep. like Cortez, yep. right? And that, and, that, and that we were going we to stand on the word of God. And we did that as husband and wife. And, and then our kids came along. Yeah. yeah. So really, I think it was a combination, like you're saying, too, of God bringing his peace, but the obedience, I think, from you and Connie as well. Because God, I feel like, is, does his peace, and he's doing those things behind the scenes. But for us to press into him and to focus on what he wants more than just what we're seeing in the physical realm, I have obviously. To, I have to tell you, I didn't feel like God was doing his thing behind the scenes. Right. I, it was revealed to me that God had already done everything for me. Right. And, it had, and to quote uh, Andrew, that he had hooked up the power uh, from the utility company to my house, all I had to do was reach flip out, reach my, reach my hand out, <laughs> right. and, and flip the switch. Right. So when I learned that, and that, and that, and that when Jesus uh, went to the cross for me, I not only got salvation, uh, I, I not only got uh, um, uh, uh, my sins mm -hmm. forgiven, but also griefs and sorrows means healing. Right. So that right. was a that was a big way to renew my mind and start believing that way. And when yep. I started believing that way, not only did my cancer go away, but I had arthritis in my leg. I had a hip pain. I was thinking about getting hip, hip surgery, wow. and it was all gone because that's I had awesome. stayed my mind on Mark eleven twenty three. Yep, that's awesome. So specifically, what do you feel like you could share with men in just all of your experiences in life, including you know your journey through cancer? that you could share with them just to help them maybe in their circumstances or situations that they deal with? Like, what do you feel like maybe the one main thing would be? I think I may have already done it. Go yeah. see your doctor. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's uh, gosh, you know, uh, I think that being a leader in the family, mm. I, I think that is, is becoming a, a, a vestigial behavior for, with, with, for with sure. us men. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's being like-minded. It's being I'm equally yoked with my wife, mm -hmm. but being yoked with men too. That's why when they have the men's advance here at, at Karis Bible, yeah, it's great. And 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 get into a really good Bible study. We're in mm -hmm. a really good Bible study. That's and, awesome. And one of my best buds, Butch Hartman, was here. He came in, just flew in with his wife, so That's he could awesome. be at the concert last <laughs> night that, that we were doing. Yeah, and we go. Along with the, with the ladies, yep. we lead the way into a, a subacute uh, facility, hospital facility in Los Angeles every Sunday, and we lay hands on the yep. sick and they recover. That's awesome. And so having that bond, it's better than it's better than going out. You can shoot hoops, but when right. you when when you lay hands on somebody <laughs> and, they, they and they get healed, <laughs> it's a little better than making a three pointer. That's, that's better than draft beer. It's better than like you. Steph Curry it's making a three pointer. Go from ahead, half. keep going with the analogies, pal. <laughs> back further back. So like minded men, you know. Yeah, I, yeah that's that, that's that, excellent. That's it. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, can you pray, please, uh, John, just for the guys and just whatever you feel like's on your heart to, to, to pray? You know, I believe, um, yeah, I believe that healing is the dinner bell for salvation. Absolutely. And I, I just want to, and that's, that's my lane. I have picked yep. since, my, since uh, I've been healed. And, and God, I just, I, I just pray for, for any, any man who is hearing this right now, yes, that God. you understand that the healing for you has already been provided. And yes. I'm just going to speak Mark 11:23 into yes, your life. God. Whoever says to that mountain, "Be removed and be cast into the sea," and does not doubt, but believes in his heart that what he says will be done, shall have what he says. Yes, and God. now, therefore, whatever you say, when you whatever you ask when you pray, believe as you receive it, and you will have it. And I speak life over you. Whatever you are dealing with right yes. now, I speak life yes, over God. you. And I speak against any spirit of infirmity that's in right. your body. In that's Jesus' right. name, Jesus name. Amen. Amen. John, thank you. It's my pleasure. Appreciate thank your you. time. It's this great, was fun. Great therapy for me. Yeah, it was a great time. Thank you. <laughs> thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks.
I hope you enjoyed John's testimony and learned some important things about his medical journey. My next interview is with CTN Christian Fitness host, Robert Evans. Robert went through his own battle with colon cancer and has an incredible testimony as well. Now you might ask yourself, why are you focusing specifically on cancer this episode? As men, it can be hard to hear that C word and be reminded of our own mortality. These testimonies are to encourage you, build up your faith, and show you how God walked beside these two men and how they came through these terrible situations in a healthy way. After Robert's interview, we head to the kitchen to discuss the importance of nutrition, not just in everyday life, but when the body is strained by medical treatments like chemotherapy. I'll be back at the end of the program to do our 360 review, so stick around. Here's my interview with Robert Evans. So Robert, thank you for being on my program, Man360. For sure. We're actually Thanks, on your set here at Christian Fitness uh, in Florida at WCLF, and um, you're, you're part of CTN family here. So I want to talk a little bit about your journey uh, in dealing with cancer and kind of some of the different, different pieces and things that you went through. You know, I think sometimes people watch us maybe on television or what we do and think that we don't really go through anything yeah. in life. You know, we're just telling everybody <laughs> right. else what yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah. So I wanted to be able to have you just share a little bit about what you've gone through and just your journey. Yeah, it was, well, first of all, um, you know, you're supposed to get a colonoscopy at the age of 50, which of course, you know, ex-athlete, macho, I don't need to go to a doctor, right? You know, right. being men, we don't go to doctors. What are that for? <laughs> right. you know, unless you're on your, you know, anyway. So uh, I didn't need to go get that checked at 50. So here I am uh, several years ago, of course, I'm about 53 or so, started having some symptoms and uh, had to go get checked out mm. and uh, got the dreaded C word. You know, well, you've got cancer. And, uh, you know, of course, the, the preconceived notion on that is as soon as you hear that, you think, well, I'm done. It's over. You know, yeah. what do I have a week? Do I have six months? You know, what? It, so and then, of course, the worst thing, which I encourage no one to ever do, is to go on the Internet, self-diagnose, because yes. oh then you start gosh. reading, OK, you've right. been diagnosed with stage three colorectal cancer, which is what I was diagnosed with. Yep. You research that life expectancy, you know, 80 percent is only two years, 90 percent of the next thing you know, your, your mind is just going crazy. So it, it just do not go on the internet. Do not research it. <laughs> trust in the word of God. Trust in godly yeah. people, godly doctors, and things like that. Right. So anyway, I got diagnosed with a stage three colorectal cancer. They wanted to do surgery immediately, which we postponed that and did a lot of natural things and mm -hmm. went to a healing school and did nothing but pray for two weeks solid and, you know, did everything that we could. Um, yeah. And uh, then decided, you know what, my levels, the numbers didn't improve at all. I'm going to go ahead and get a, have, have surgery. So um, they removed about eight inches of my colon and had a couple surgeries wow. and, you know, did chemotherapy, did radiation at the same time, and then did chemo again after the second surgery. Uh, so it was about a, you know, year, year and a half long uh, battle, but mm -hmm. uh, it's been two years now, completely cancer free. That's awesome. And uh, so it was, uh, it was quite, quite the journey, quite yeah. the trial. So yeah, as you mentioned, people see you, and by the way, you'd have an exercise show going right, through right. that. So, you know, <laughs> right. thank goodness you might see some shows that are right. 10, 12 years old. You know, they're right. not all brand new. You weren't doing like a cream puff uh, show for Christians. You know, we weren't like, doing this a lot is how of, you yeah. eat cream puffs yeah. at, the, at the donut shop. We didn't You're do like, a lot no. of core programs, you know, right. like a lot of stomach exercise <laughs> with an ileostomy bag. Right. So, we right. didn't do a lot of that. Uh, but we still did do some programs, did a lot of things. So, yeah. We did a, did a neat golf show where we had kids exercise for us. That's awesome. And we kind of just instructed them, had fun yeah. with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we all go through stuff. We all go through things. It's how do you approach that battle and how do you deal with with that battle. So uh, yeah. it, it was quite the trial, but yeah, it was stage three colorectal cancer, uh, two years cancer free now, wow. feel great starting to exercise and lift and that's uh, awesome. And feel great. Feel great. So you mentioned kind of at the start of saying when you hear, when you heard the word cancer associated and you connected that with your name. So what do you feel like some of the preconceived things that you thought of or had heard about or read about in cancer? And then after being on this side of it as well, but even walking through it, kind of some of those myths were maybe dispelled as you were walking through that. Kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, the first thing you hear is you think instant death. You know, how long do I have? Mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many different types of cancer and stages of cancer. And, yeah. and you know, then you start learning all these things. But um, we were so blessed. Uh, we went to Moffitt Cancer Center, which is in Tampa. It's mm -hmm. about, I want to say, maybe 50, 60 miles from here every day. You <laughs> make that drive. Um, it still worked and did everything we could. Yeah. But the doctors that we had were phenomenal. Um, we tried to do as many natural things as we could, and they, yep. they encouraged that. Um, you know, they didn't say, no, you have to do this, this, and this. Um, and of course, they recommend, you know, the chemo and, and those things that they dealt with us, yeah. but they were so, so good. Um, all the staff there was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to encourage people to surround yourself with positive people, with godly people, yeah. get the proper counsel, get proper wisdom from pastors, from friends. Yeah. 
Um, be careful what you listen to, who, who speaks into your life. Yep. You know, from a spiritual sense, you aren't going to allow the devil to just whisper to you all day long. You're going right. to rebuke that. Satan, get them behind me. And you're going to quote scripture. Mm -hmm. Same thing with people. Don't let people speak those things into your life. Yeah. We had stuff said to us like, are you kidding me? What? Right. I, I mean, I know, you know, I, I would hope that's not from your heart. You know? right. <laughs> I hope you're listening to the wrong voice or whatever. <laughs> right. um, so anyway, we surrounded ourselves with godly people, with good godly doctors yeah. that, that would give you, you know, the proper advice and just open book with us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was so funny. One story, they give you this little chart every day when you go in, you know, mm -hmm. how do you feel today? And they have these little smiley faces, <laughs> the little frowny faces, a 10, you know, I, I'm the number one face is a big smile. Right. And I'm like, hey, no matter how you feel, you've got, you've got to right. profess that. And I would say, I feel great. I feel, you know what? Right. You don't even have the number on there because I have Jesus. So whatever will be right. beyond that one. And this one nurse was a believer and she's like, can I put that on there? I said, yeah, write that on. She actually wrote on the report, pass the little smiley face, better than the number one, Jesus. And then of course that's they scan awesome. those in so you can go on my records and look up and see that that's in part of my records. Right. Um, so anyway, that's just another godly person at the Moffitt Cancer Center. That, that's awesome. That, I mean, we ended up ministering to nurses. Um, it was just, uh, you know, cause you're in there, you're, you're got your, um, um, your pump, you're hooked up for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And then you take the pump home for three days and all these yeah. chemo treatments. And uh, we had one chemo nurse that always told us every time you come in request, me, and she would sit because we teach a Bible study, my wife and I, and we yeah. would be studying our Bible study while we're doing that. And she would sit with us and we'd minister to her about That's her awesome. family. And um, so it's, it was really a focus on uh, just keep your eyes on God, yeah. surround yourself with godly people mm -hmm. and don't look at the circumstances because they change. Right. Facts change. The fact right. was when I was getting radiation and chemo, my hands were peeling and splitting mm -hmm. my feet. You know, they hurt. You can't walk on them. Um, but I know that is the fact for today, but that's going to change yeah. because the word of God says, I know God's promises and here's what he says. Right. So you have to look at that promise and not look at the current circumstance. So yes, yes my yeah. hands are blistered and, and right. you know, you, you're sensitive to heat and to cold and nothing tastes good. <laughs> through all the gamut of everything. But I know what the promise is. I know what the finish line is. Right. So yeah, I'm going to endure this because I know what the finish line is. Yeah, I think it's important to remember, you know, as a believer, that it's not just other non-believers that are watching us go through that, but also even other Christians that are wanting to be encouraged to, when we're walking through things as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think you mentioned that as well, just in putting and placing people around you was as much as important as scripture, mm -hmm. as just breathing those things and having those. I know Lori was a big part oh, of that gosh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what do you feel like was one thing that God really taught you going through it? Um, I know, you know, we read all the time in the Bible as far as the, the different things and different people mm -hmm. had gone through different life circumstances or situations. But I really feel like God always wants us to bring and to focus on what we've learned through whatever we sure. go through. So what can you say would be the one greatest point that you feel like God showed you going through what you did? Two, one, the greatest point I'll get to in a second. First one is just how <laughs> really, how real, bonus <laughs> point. Yeah, how real eternity is. I mean, what, well, yeah. like I said, that cancer word, you think it's yeah. over. Now, what has my life meant? What have I done? More importantly, what am I going to do with the rest of it? Right. So eternity becomes so real to you. Um, but what I felt like I learned the most out of that was how much God loves me. Hmm. Um, and people are like, how, what? Wait, you went through all that? You know, yeah. are you kidding? No, but we, we uh, purpose, Lauren, my wife and I, Lori, purpose in our hearts every day to look for the goodness of God. Because when awesome. you're going for chemo, you're going to, I mean, you feel like garbage. That's why I say you can't look at the circumstance right. or you'll just be self-defeating. Right. So we always look for the goodness of God in every day and everything. And it could be as simple as driving to Moffat in the morning and the sunrise. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, thank you, Father. Thank yeah. you for, you know, we're not looking for signs, but things would, would happen. We'd be behind a car at a stoplight and had to have a Jesus loves you bumper sticker. You know, yeah. just little tiny things. Every day we look for something mm -hmm. um, just to be a blessing to the people we we're around at Moffitt. Um, so every day to look for the goodness of God. And he came through every day. And, awesome. and just to realize one of my favorite scriptures that I held on to Proverbs 4, 20 through 23, the beginning of that is my son. Just that, you can stop right, right there. Just realize, oh my gosh, he is my father. He wants nothing but the best. As a father, he wants to do everything he can for his child. Mm -hmm. So to realize that that was one thing I learned is how much he actually loves me. That's awesome. And uh, man, to, to it almost overwhelms you when you really think about yeah. the creator of heaven and earth loves you that much. And that's, that's really what I got out of how much. And not just right. me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, right. he's no respect of persons. It's for everybody, right. of course. So right. He loved as much as I Well, did, so. and because we believe that, you know, he loves all of us equally yeah. and knows where we are. Can you pray for our viewers oh, right now? Just yeah, pray for our men to. that are maybe struggling or just maybe don't feel that love. And, you know, spe especially mm -hmm. as men maybe can't express that to someone mm -hmm. that you can just pray, you know, just for whatever God lays in your heart. Absolutely. 
Yeah, just uh, Father, <laughs> thank you, first of all, for this opportunity for us just to witness mm -hmm. of your goodness, Father, of, of what you've done in my life. And I know in Brian's life, Brian's life with the things that he's he's pushed through as well, Father. We just thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for seeing us through that other side, seeing us through to that finish line, Father, to your promises. So if you're out there and we all go through stuff, especially through physical stuff, so these, these bodies age, they, mm -hmm. they end up, you know, <laughs> it, it happens. So if you're going through something and you're struggling with it, I want you to know how much God loves you. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is I would encourage you look for the goodness of God. So Father, I just ask for all those out there right now that may be questioning, may be struggling, Lord, that you would just reveal yourself to them in the little ways even that we talked about today, from a yes. sunrise to a bumper sticker, whatever yeah. it is, Father, that they would seek you, that they would not look at the circumstances, that they would look for your goodness, and that, Father, you would flood them with your Holy Spirit, flood them with your love, Father, that they would never be the same. That right now, they would feel that touch. They would feel your touch. They would feel your arms wrap around them. They will feel your love come up from the yes, inside Father. of them, Father. And we just thank you that you would touch them right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Robert, thank you for being a part thank of the program and uh, sharing your story. And uh, we just love you and appreciate you and Likewise. just uh, continued health in you and just that God will continue to let the story live on Amen. and uh, change people's lives. Amen. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thank you. So Robert, you mentioned in our segment that uh, you know some of the different dietary things and the choices that you made. So why don't you share a little more in depth about what you did personally in conjunction with uh, what you were doing medically with the doctors? Well, first of all, the chemo, of course, it's poison. So right. <laughs> what it does to your body, um, my appetite just, everything tastes like metal. I mean, really? yeah, each person has a different you know side effect, but to me, everything tasted like metal. I mean, it was just, uh, so anyway, there were certain things, you know, that I loved, I couldn't eat anymore. So thank God for my wife. She was <laughs> incredible cook and chef and everything else. So she would experiment and try things, you know, what, how is this? What does this taste like? What does that taste like? Yeah. And um, so she would, of course, we've got our blender out here and everything because we did a lot of smoothies, you know, blend as many things up as you can and try to make it taste good to get all the nutrients. Because, <laughs> right. uh, you know, you're starved for nutrients. Your antibodies are down, your immune system is down, so you mm -hmm. need all those nutrients. And uh, so she would blend as much as she could and make it really delicious. Um, we had a good friend of ours who owns Bioactive Nutrients and uh, he sent us their meal replacement, oh, which nice. was, I mean, so definitely men, if you're out there and you need that, find a good, but find a good quality meal replacement because a lot of them are just filled with filler. They just put right. filler and garbage and sugars. Right. Stay away from all those because sugar is evil, which yeah. as you well know, staying off of it yeah. now, sugar does nothing, but it's an inflammatory. inflammatory uh, yeah, right. It's horrible for any, anything. We're on a daily basis a healthy person, mm -hmm. let alone somebody going through chemotherapy or anything else. Uh, so anyway, we found a really great meal replacement and we take, took that every day. We took some greens every morning and did some supplements um, because nothing tasted good, so it's hard to get the amount of nutrients you need. And what, were some of the the what were some of the supplements that you used in conjunction with just natural fruit? We started off with a lot of different things and then we tailored off on some of those. I mean, okay. we, we did everything originally. Um, but then we really tailored down to what they, Bioactive Nutrients has, what's called a Berry Good Greens, which okay. was just a lot of greens, and then we did their meal replacement. And those right. were really the two main ones. We did the Berry Greens in the morning and they did the meal replacement in the afternoon or the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, but then really just, and we put all the nice, beautiful, fake fresh fruit out. Fake fresh fruit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we um, said our apples were yeah, making exactly. us hungry yeah, and we were looking at them. It, but anyway, eating fresh. That was one of the keys okay. was don't eat the process. We talk about sugar is evil, but so yeah. are all the things they put in the processed foods, the high fructose corn syrup and those things. Mm -hmm. You've got to stay away from those um, in a general sense, let alone if you're going through chemo or any kind of, right. of, of health issue. Um, so we tried to do as much natural as we could, and yeah. as fresh and as natural as we could. And that was a key to, I mean, I never, through the year and a half battle of all the surgery, and the chemo yeah. and, and uh, everything else. Radiation had that at the same time as yeah. chemo. Um, I never really got sick. You know, because your, awesome. your white blood cells counts down, your immune system yeah. is compromised, and I never really got the flu or got the cold. Now, I never felt good either because of the chemo, it's poison, but right. <laughs> I didn't right. have any sickness on top of that, <laughs> right. and that's what they really worry about. You know, they're really hypersensitive to you becoming sick right. because you can't fight it off. Right. So uh, the nutrients and eating nothing but healthy food really, really helped me through that. And I think we talked about, too, even before our last segment, we were talking about um, you know, finding a doctor that's not afraid to look into supplements and some of those pieces too. I think some doctors it's just easier 
to give and just pump you full of more drugs, mm -hmm. but really finding a doctor and finding, uh, you know, specifically a nutritionist that way, in a way, mm -hmm. that can help you to be able just in, in taking care of your body while you're dealing with that. Because you want to help have your body, give your body a fighting chance. Absolutely. Obviously, we still believe in, believe in prayer. Yes. You know, we believe in the Word of God. We believe in all those things, but also just the common sense that God gave us as well mm -hmm. to be able to help us with all of the pieces in helping us to be healthy. Right. So I think it's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for this appreciate segment it. and uh, appreciate you again sharing a little bit about what you did to walk through this journey. Thanks for the opportunity. It's awesome. I too dealt with a medical issue a few years ago. I had a five-year health journey where I almost lost my eye. I dealt with depression, anger towards God, and had some pretty stubborn moments and what was the lowest point in my life and walk with God. Part of my recovery process was going to a counselor to simply help with taking my thoughts captive and felt it was very beneficial. I wrote a book called Holy Crap, Finding God's Presence in Your Pain and provided a page on the website with a link to purchasing my book and a little more information about what I went through. Here's a little more information about ordering my book. I'll be right back. Holy Crap, Finding God's Presence in Your Pain is more than just a book. It's a look inside a very painful time in my life where I almost lost my eye to a disease that doctors could not find the root cause. It drained us financially, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. It's also about an awakening of a relationship with God and realizing that even though I didn't want to hold on to Him in my disease, that He was still holding on to me. It's a known fact that at some point in life, we will all go through a painful circumstance that can be difficult to navigate. Who we are and what we believe will be tested. I know that I didn't really understand who I was until I came to the end of myself, and this book is my story of what I went through and also what I learned in the process. Holycrapbook.com has also been set up as a resource for you to continue the conversation after you read the book. You can also go there for more information about how to order the book. I'm excited about helping people see that they can find the holy in the crap of their lives. If you need prayer, I would love to pray with you. Click on the website contact link and send me your prayer requests. Don't forget to check out all of our social media platforms and let us know how we're doing or topics you would like to see covered in future episodes. I want to leave you with a scripture today. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. As a man, I usually don't like asking for directions when I'm trying to get somewhere. But I can't truly know where I'm going unless I ask for directions. Today, ask God to help give you direction in life and follow His lead, especially in the struggles of life. Until next time, let's strive to be complete in every way. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time right here on Man 360. You never know, that's what I learned, you never know when is going to be the last time you see someone. Yeah. And that, that's awesome, and that helps people, but uh, that's not real life. So, Parties, and there's all these 90-year-olds there, <laughs> right. so you think. God is awesome, even in your disappointment. Want me to burp? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you fart. Six. No, no I'm not going <laughs> to I'm like this. It's all that pasta Ken eats. Right. Six, Sorry. Five, four, three.